UFC flyweight prospect Maria Agapova. Thank you so much, Maria, for the time. And uh, how are you feeling today? Good. And you? Good, good, good. Um, I wanted to first get into your uh, amateur boxing days. I heard a couple stories about it, how you used to beat up everybody. Tell me about those times. Uh, about amateur boxer times? Yes. It was pretty tough time. It's beginning my career. I only started doing boxing. And I started get money for boxing when I was 16. But after I keep going, they don't give me opportunity, cut my money, and I just go MMA. Who introduced you to MMA? Well, why did you decide to go to MMA? There's a, a lot of other sports, you know? Uh, just I want to use all my body for fighting. I always want to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, way dangerous. I yeah, and I just, uh, it was in my gym in my city, and I just go in there. When you stepped into that gym, was the, were there all the coaches that you worked with until you went to American Top Team? Uh, yeah, I work with my coach. His name is Renat. We work in my city, but now I go away from this team because they are not good guys. Oh, really? What? Yeah, I don't know. When I come into America, I make my fight, I can't give them percent and they just leave me here alone. And only my managers support me. Oh, wow. That's, uh, yeah, yeah that's, those are not good guys. Yeah, it's not good guys. Only my coach from this team, cool. I still still talk with him. He support me, but these guys, they not cool. Well, it works out for you, though. You know, your manager took care of you. You, you went to American Top Team. And uh, yeah, and now you're set to make your UFC debut. But before we get into the your uh, debut, I wanted to talk about a uh, a fight that you had scheduled earlier this year. You couldn't make it. You had a car accident. Can you talk about the car accident and 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 did you get any injuries from that? Mm, yeah, I have scars. It's here. Wow. I yeah. don't know you can see or not, but uh, it's not pain anymore. Just it was day. And I come back to my training, and every car stay on the line, wait when I come in. And one guy, he was on phone or something, he not see me, and they and just hit me. I don't know how it's possible, probably he was on phone. And he just hit me, and they, when I come back after my training. So you were walking? No, I was on bicycle. Oh, you are on a bicycle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I know how that feels. I was hit on uh on a bicycle too when i was younger so yeah. it's not a good feeling yeah driver's crazy exactly in florida <laughs> <laughs> now with uh with the injuries did you have to get any uh medical attention or was it just some scratches mm, it's just uh mm, skin skin on my elbow just mm, tear up and uh, it's just the doctors uh, make a couple stitches and after I take off it after a couple of weeks, but my fight already done. I lost my fight because my elbow was bad and I can't go in fight and it was hard time. But after a couple of months, this, uh, my manager signed me in UFC and now I get sponsorship, TV com, Kizet and uh, everything good. How long did it take you to get back into training after the the elbow healed up? Oh, I come back after a couple of days. Just uh, coaches not allowing doing me sparring, and they just doing conditioning. And after a couple of weeks, I come back and I can't use my elbow well, and they just keep training, keep training, and now I use my elbow good. Is your favorite weapon? Oh, mm, probably, probably. <laughs> On the ground, I like. Of course. Uh, yeah, well, you mentioned earlier that you went to America for the Contender Series. Uh, this was last summer. Uh, you lost a decision to Tracy Cortez. Uh, yeah. a, very, a very big fight, you know, to move your career. How difficult was that loss to overcome for you? I don't know. I think this, this loss happens for a good way. Because after this loss, uh, my ex-teammates, they start showing their real face. Because before this, I don't have no one loss. And they, oh, good, Mashka, you good. And now I won loss and they not support me. They start bullying me for this, 
tell me like give me money give me money but i have to pay for rent 1000 a month i tell them like guys i can't give you money maybe you wait a little bit and they start treating me like contracts like they sued me and this contracts bullshit <laughs> it's not me and nothing and they just manipulating and when i understand this i just tell okay guys bye i don't need it anymore <laughs> also it was a very stressful time after the after the contender series all my life stressful. It's okay. It's life. <laughs> Normally tough. Makes you tough. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Well, after that, you know, you went to American Top Team. You you got signed by Invicta. You destroyed two opponents, like it, yeah. very impressively. And uh, what what changed in you? Did you make any changes, or was it just you know just normal? Just like hey, I lost. I just got to move forward. I just changed my mind. Before Dana White contenders, uh, they promised me a lot of money and you see it's big level, very high level. And I was focused on this, not on fight. But after this losing, I remind why I start doing MMA, why I start doing fighting. I do it just for feel something because when I fight, I feel that I'm alive. I feel adrenaline. I like it. And I fighting for this, not really for money, for something. I fight just for fight <laughs> that's it and i just after my losing i start going to fight and get pleasure get enjoy from my fights and uh, it's finished first round always and i change my mind just now i not focus on money not focus on famous you not focus what will be if i win i just focus on fight because fight it's the important thing the very important thing it's just fight <laughs> yeah yeah um you were supposed to make your UFC debut in your home country of Kazakhstan. How diff yeah. or how disappointing were you were you that it didn't happen? Or do you feel like it's a blessing? Like, cause you know when you debut somewhere a big fight in your home country, it could be a lot of pressure. Yeah, it could be a lot of pressure, and uh, I was sad that I not see my family, my friends. But uh, it's helped me focus on my fight because um, nobody. Mm, they will see my fight, but I not will feel it, and I will more focus on my fight. I think it's good for me. Uh, the opponent that you have is Melissa Gatto. What do you think about her? Yeah, I watch her fight. She good jiu-jitsu girl, and uh, it was uh, kind of classic UFC like make fight like jiu-jitsu versus striker. They like mm -hmm. fight like this. We will see what happens. <laughs> Just I wait this fight. I hope she can fly here because I heard that B Brazilian close on quarantine, and I don't know she can fly here or not. I heard that not, but I hope she can. Well, she she has pulled out of her first two fights in the UFC. This is actually her debut too. Does that concern yeah. you a little bit? No, not really. I, after my after I change my mind, I not worry before fights anymore. Just I always get enjoy when I fighting, and uh, when you start worried, you think about win, about money, about I have to win. But you not have to do nothing. You just have to fight. It's all what you can do. Just enjoy from fight. Enjoy, get pleasure. And if you enjoy your fight, everything going good. If you not enjoy your fight, you lost. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Some places I see that this fight is going to be at flyweight, and then I seen another place they're saying that it could, it could be at bantamweight because Gato she fights at bantamweight. What what is the? Can you clear it up? Uh, go uh, high to bantamweight. I don't know. Now I'm bantamweight, and I need mm -hmm. just cut nine pounds more, and I will be on flyweight. I don't know. Mm, one twenty five. I feel myself faster in one thirty five. I, I I fight already in 135 and I feel pretty pretty bad because because I heavy and when I heavy it's hard to move and I get tired. I don't think that it's my weight. My weight it's 125. But because this fight. It, what about this it, fight? It, this fight it's I think it will be 125 because mm -hmm. I'm 125 fighter. You see, I not think that I go in 135 because now I'm 135. <laughs> okay. It's okay. not my fight weight. It's yeah. I think there's a confusion online because some people say that it's gonna. It, this will be a bantamweight fight. I don't know why because you're a flyweight. You've been fighting at flyweight for so long. Yeah, I, um, I fight flyweight for sure. 
I don't know yeah. what's going on. I see yeah. this on the internet too, but oh, wait, I don't know. I, I yeah. think what? People I don't, don't know. know. Probably somebody make mistake. Definitely, definitely. Uh, now, American Top Team, you know, that's in southern Florida. You're from northern Kazakhstan. Yeah, I'm northern from Kazakhstan. North- very cold. Florida, very hot and humid. You know, when you train, was it very difficult in the beginning? Oh, in the beginning, yes, because uh, it's uh, time zone change. Because mm-hmm. now here, evening, in my country, getting morning. Mm-hmm. It was hard. Exactly on four days, everybody who coming from my country, from Russia, on four days, they feel tired. They don't have weak, or they don't have power for training it's probably because i lost because um, i fly three weeks before my fight here flying was very hard i fly two days first i flying from my city to moscow staying in moscow on one day after frankfurt and after miami it was very long flying and i very tired and after i go in las vegas back las vegas again probably flying make me kind of tired before this fight I think if not flying, yeah, I'm not flying. And Invicta fights was cool because I was here, make acclimatization, everything good. Mm-hmm. But uh, before Dana White contenders, just bad luck for me, probably. But uh, I think everything happens for good reason. Yeah. All right, well, now at American Top Team, who are your uh, main training partners that you've been working with for the last uh, six months or a year? Mm, my main partner was Jillian Robertson. Now she go to another state, and I work with Kyla Hracho, Kyrock. Yeah, okay. Kyla Hracho, Trisha Sierra. It's my sparring partners. Always we work together with Kyla exactly a lot of we work a lot even today we work she cool girl i like her <laughs> so grateful for her for helping me always in my camp when did the the gym open back up because it was closed for a little while right yeah it's uh, i think it's uh, getting open because more and more guys come into gym it's already all professional guys can come in i think uh, soon they open for amateurs and every gym's open, every beach is open. I think after a couple of weeks, everything going normal. So how do you see this fight against Gato playing out? Do you see yourself performing just like you did in Invicta and just dominating completely? I don't know. I just want go to this fight and get pleasure. That's it. It's all what I want to do. Fights, it's not technique. It's not a plan. It's just improvisation. You just go and it, you feel happens what happens you never control it because it's real fight it's always your improvisation you never know it's finished first round or will be all three rounds you never know and i always think that it will be three rounds i always think that it will be hard fight but sometimes it's finished first round (laughs) well that's the best right yeah, but it's always like improvisation. I never control it. I just see opportunity and just finish. When I see opportunity to finish, I finish. And that's it. Well, you've <laughs> done a great job finding the opportunities. Now, one last thing before I let you go. Uh, I saw in another interview that you learned English watching South Park, Rick and Morty. What are the new shows you're watching now on uh, on TV or Netflix or whatever? Now I really not watch shows. I start uh, reading books, uh, reading books, translate songs, because now TV not really interesting for me. And I start going to books because I need make better my literature language. Because when I talk with people, it's good. But when somebody call me from insurance company or um, news, something official, I don't understand almost nothing because I can talk with people, but I can't understand literature language. It's a problem for me. And I was learning a little bit and books helped me with this. Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, South Park, you know, that was interesting to me because South Park is a crazy show and <laughs> learning English from yeah. that is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, but it's about America. Before I come into America, I think it's just cartoon. I not think that it's real life. Because when I come into America, I watch South Park and wow, it's like in real life. It's really true. It's about real life. It's not just cartoon. And the Rick and Morty and South Park, I, before I come into America, I think that it's just cartoons 
somebody figure out it. It's not real. But when I come into America, I was in shock because everything like in movie, like in cartoons. Oh, I was in shock. <laughs> Yeah, because in my country, everything different, everything here, like in movie. <laughs> I feel myself like in movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the movie continues June 13th, UFC. Yeah. I don't even know what it's called. I think it's called UFC Apex, should be in Las Vegas. You will make your debut. Thank you so much for the time, Maria, and uh, good luck on the fight and good luck on your journey through the UFC, and uh, we'll speak soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. Have a good night. Everything. Wish you good things.